Where is social justice in our country? Where is justice for all people who have a right to enjoy their years of retirement after many years of hard labor? Where is social justice for the many people who work in manual intensive jobs and now are expected to work until 70 by the year 2035? Where is social justice for the many migrants who have built this country and are still struggling to make their ends meet on their pensions? I believe that it is time that we start a broader discussion about social justice and equity in Australia. We need to start talking about how we can advance as a country where we share its wealth amongst all segments of the population and where all people get a fair go. I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of statistical matters. Probably not all of us are aware, but the top 154 chief executive officers, CEOs of Australia's big corporations, their pay is 154 times greater than the minimum wage. And this government, this, this government is likely to adopt although it didn't come through in this budget, at least not in Joe Hockey's speech, but they are likely to adopt the proposal from the so-called Audit Commission to cut the minimum wage by $140 a week. We need to be demanding that the minimum wage not be cut, but it should be significantly increased. On a personal basis, I know about the, the uh, Medicare cuts or the increase in going to the doctors. Um, as some of you may know, back in 2009, I went in for a simple operation, uh, an overnight stay that went wrong, and ended up four months in hospital, one month in a coma, and uh, two months in intensive care, which apparently is the only... I hold the record, but it's not a record I'm all that wrapped about holding. But, um, I have about $120 a week for the medications and I went in to see the uh, pharmacist uh, two days ago and said that my medication has gone up by 35 bucks a week, which is around about 1,800 a year. So I just want to congratulate pensioners for a fair go because pensioners conjures up old people and it isn't young people who don't have access to work, to food and to accommodation, they also, but sadly, it's being asked them to jump through hoops and then asked them to jump through hoops while they're naked and then asked them to jump through hoops naked while it's on fire. You've got to connect and support families at the very roots of their support. You've got to make sure they have access to food, to education and to medicine and to accommodation. Never forget that it was the Labor Party who started this by reducing the age in the Keating era down to 16 and now it's eight, and now Tony Abbott in the last budget is going to take the family tax benefits of single parents as soon as their youngest child turns six. <laughs> After already copying serious financial hits that, that amount to, in some families, hundreds of dollars a fortnight out of their income, they are now going to take another $115 to $150 a week. Our universal health system is being destroyed as we watch if we don't take a stand now. Now, how do we do that? Well, what we need is we need Labor to step up and stop being irrelevant. We need them to actually take a stand for the working class, old, sick, poor, and the first people of our country. The only way we can stop this is to get him out now and I want Labor to block supply and go to an election on principle. Win or lose, it's about time they did that again. Today that Joe Hockey handed down the budget that savaged the lives of pensioners, that savaged the lives of the poor, of students, of Indigenous people, of disabled people. That day, Joe Hockey said, was the very best day of his life. It was the best day of his life 
because this budget is about delivering for him and his fellow Liberal Party ministers who are some of the richest people in this country. He will never have to go without a midi or a coffee or a Cuban cigar or a $50,000 taxpayer funded champagne dinner. Him and the 1% in this country, the rich in this country, are making the biggest profits that they have made in 50 years. Yet that's not enough. They want to squeeze us for every drop they can. They want to demolish the welfare state. Joe Hockey has said this is just the beginning. The attacks on pensioners, the attacks on workers, this is just the beginning. There are places to look to find money if Joe Hockey wants to look it, and that's at the big end of town. But it takes guts to stand up to the wealthy. It takes courage to stand up to the powerful, but a coward takes the axe to the young, the old, and the sick, and the poor, and that's exactly what this government has done. There used to be a compact here that said, if you fall on hard times, we will look after you. If you put in all your life, we won't make you work till you drop, but we will let you retire with dignity and look after you. And there used to be a compact that said, no matter what the size of your wallet, if you get sick, you can get to a doctor because we don't have a US-style healthcare system here. In Australia, you only need your Medicare card to go to a GP. You don't need your credit card as well. Now, all of that is under threat from Tony Abbott and his budget. And I will tell you that if the Greens, the Labor Party and the Palmer Party all work together, we can block this budget. And from the Greens... This federal budget is not about budget repair. It is declaring war on low-income groups and the poor, slashing public services, welfare, health and education, and cutting welfare payments. These policy changes are toxic, driving more people into poverty and reshaping Australia as an uncaring, unjust and unfair society. There go for pensioners says no, no way. There is more to life than work. Yes, yes, yes. The pension is to be indexed to the consumer price index, not wages growth. Historically, wages growth has increased at about two percentage points more than CPI. This means and the experts, including combined pensioners, um, have crunched some numbers and a couple's pension will drop a hundred, up to $100 a week within seven years of that change and for a single person, $50 a week within five years. This is disgraceful. It's a shameful. Yes. Abbott also promised to ease cost of living pressures. Rubbish. Rubbish! Not likely. In the meantime, the poor are being told we are drinking and smoking our way through welfare money. This is code for the undeserving poor. Poverty is not about individual behaviour, but social inequality. Shame. Increased poverty is certain. We are looking at a very grim future and an age of in an inequality. Prime Minister and Premier Napstein, hang your heads in shame. Yeah.